The numbers are in for the greater DC area housing market. And I think there are a lot of misconceptions about what buyers should do in today's market and what the market will do moving forward through the end of 2023. In this video, I'm gonna cover what the National Association of Home Builders has to say about where we are today and where the market is headed, along with showing you what has been going on here in the DC metro housing market, what interest rates are doing, and even what the founder of Zillow has to say about where we're headed. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Rick Hartunian. I'm a realtor here with Living in Greater DC. And although my team and I sell a lot of houses, townhomes, and condos throughout the Greater DC area, specifically Maryland and Northern Virginia, if you learn anything new from this video, or any others that I put out, all I ask is that you hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel so you can join our growing community and see more city tours, pros and cons videos, and news about what's going on here in the greater DC area housing market. You can also go down to the first link in the description and book an appointment with me at a time that works best for you. Now, the National Association of Home Builders Index is based on a monthly survey of National Home Builders members to take the pulse of the single family housing market. The survey they take asks them to rate what the market conditions are at right now, the present time, what they think will be in the coming six months, as well as what the traffic of actual home buyers of new homes is today. And of the many charts that we can view, there are two specifically that I like to focus on, which show the current month's index and the total amount of single family housing starts meaning how many homes are starting to be built. Now, as they come up with their index, they take a national approach, but they also do a regional approach along with a three month moving average. We're just gonna focus on the top box here, uh, which is the national approach to see what the trend is of their rating and what they rated for September. Now, as we can see, if we just start from the beginning of 2023, in all three categories, the ratings were rising from January reaching a peak in July, but since then have dropped steadily to adjust for the current market. Now, looking here at the new single family starts chart dating all the way back to when it started in January of 1985 to today, you can see, of course, the gigantic drop in housing starts during the financial crisis of 08, where after a few years, home starts then steadily rose until the pandemic hit after a large drop in March of 2020. Building starts rose dramatically until the next sharp decline starting at the beginning of last year. During the middle of 2023, home builder attitudes rose where home starts began to increase. But as interest rates continued to climb throughout the year and home purchases slowed to where they are today, home builders have become wary of the market, making sure not to overbuild. Now, I think that this information is extremely important to look at every so often because it gives you a greater understanding of where we are today without just looking at your favorite city's real estate numbers every single month. We all understand that a major reason for where we are today is because of the lack of housing supply and a large portion of our supply comes from new homes being built. So we always wanna see what they have to say. Now let's pivot to our local numbers here in the greater DC area and start real quick with the housing demand index. You can clearly see month over month that the demand for single family homes, condos, and townhomes at all varying price points are down dramatically from the middle of summer. Now, I'm always going to show you guys exactly where I'm speaking about just because there's so many different areas that these housing stats cover. But again, the DC metro market area consists of Frederick, Montgomery, and PG County, Maryland, Washington, DC, and then Arlington and Alexandria, along with Fairfax County and Loudoun County here in Northern Virginia. Now, the DC metro area home prices slid over the summer but competition remains strong with median home values at 585,000 across the entire DC Metro, which is down from the peak of 600,000 uh, this past June. Now, about a year ago, single family home values were rising the fastest. That has now changed to townhomes and condos, which usually are a bit more affordable for home buyers than single family detached properties. But more and more buyers are being priced out of the market, um, you know, making the new pending sales significantly lower then they should be in a more normal housing market. Even though there are fewer buyers than ever, low inventory continues to be an issue with active listings at the end of August being down over 18% compared to a year ago. And the total available inventory for the entire DC Metro is only half of what it was prior to the pandemic with the total supply of just single family detached homes only one third of what it was pre-pandemic levels. Okay, now as we can see here, the amount of closed home sales is down almost 14% from this same time last year, which has been the trend with less homes hitting the market for sale. Supply jumped up a bit in uh, DC, but the number of active listings was down in all of the other markets. 
New listings are certainly hard to come by, being down by more than 20% in some of these areas combined. Buyers must still act quickly though, because homes average days on market decline in most areas as well. With so few listings and the pent up buyer demand, it's no surprise that the median sales price is continuing to rise. We are now at a 5.5% increase in home price for the entire area from this time last year. It was just about 5% last month, so we've risen yet another half of percent overall year over year with Fairfax County here seeing the largest jump. Now, I'm very interested to see what the September numbers will show now that this month is nearly over because it feels that the trend has continued, but for August, new pendings and new listings were down dramatically across the board. Many areas are down over 20% from this time last year, making a stagnant market even more difficult for buyers to purchase a home that they want. Now, this is an interesting comparison where the amount of active listings is down, showing that supply is lower, which we know. However, the months of supply is up in most of these counties, and that shows the true stagnation of where we are uh, in the market. There's less homes available to purchase, but there's also less buyers out looking, making it seem like there are more homes available when in fact, really both categories are just down. The amount that are available and the amount that are being purchased are both lower than they have been. To round up the local numbers here, I love to look at our weekly snapshot as well. This is for the week ending September 24th, 2023 for the DC metro area, looking at the amount of showings, new contracts, days on market, new listings, and the median list price. And compared to a week ago, we are down all across the board. I know that many of you that are watching this that need to make a move are worried about where the market is today. I'm going to jump and show you where the current interest rates are and what some experts have to say about where we're headed. However, for many of the buyers that me and my team work with, you know, one thing that you can count on right now through the end of 2023 and into winter of 2024 is the lack of buyer competition that you'll face compared to any other time of the year. You know, this means that we're able to negotiate more on home prices, contingencies, inspections, you know, more money back at settlement to go into your pocket, et cetera. And you know, you can always refinance into a lower interest rate in the future, which we'll talk about in a second. The housing market is just landlocked in a way right now where Homes are hard to afford at their current price. However, as interest rates come down, if they do, more buyers will come out to buy, which is gonna raise those home prices due to this lack of future supply. The back and forth is leading many people to believe that home prices will stay stagnant, and if anything, slowly rise over the next handful of years. As you can see here, mortgage rates have steadily increased throughout the month of August, starting at around 6.5% and rising all the way to 7.4% to where we are today. As of today, rates are 7.3% for a 30-year fixed mortgage. You know, the good news for anyone looking to purchase in the coming weeks or months is that last week, the Fed did not increase interest rates at all. However, they did hint that another hike will be happening most likely uh, before the end of the year, about a quarter of a percent to continue their battle against inflation. If approved, this will bring the Fed's benchmark interest rate to a new 22-year high, of 5.75%. Now, just a couple days ago, Spencer Raskoff, a founder of Zillow, gave his opinion on the housing market and why we are about to see a standstill in the near future. I'm gonna put the link for the video either up here in the description so you can always go. It's a three minute video. I'm not gonna play it here in the channel, but I'm gonna summarize what he said. Uh, basically, he started by saying, at this moment, 90% of homeowners have a mortgage rate of 5% or lower, while 80% have it at 4% or lower. On the supply side, people can't list their home, and on the demand side, we're at a 40-year low of housing affordability. In fact, most homeowners couldn't even afford to rebuy their own home today. What Spencer says is that because we are locked up, really, we just have to sit tight and wait it out for a bit. Maybe perhaps the Fed will help us with interest rates to make things a little bit more affordable. Extremely unlikely. Also, those homeowners that took five, seven, and 10 year arms, which are adjustable rate mortgages, will be coming due for a few people over the next few years, adjusting them into a higher interest rate, making it unaffordable to live in their home today, um, which is most likely going to force them to sell, causing a little uptick in inventory although this is not an immediate solution. He goes on to say, it's certainly a great market for new home builders, and that is usually a gigantic piece of the inventory that's added every single year, but because they remain low after the financial crisis of 08, our inventory is certainly dried up and they simply just can't build them fast enough. Home builds went from about a million a year before the crash of 08 
down to about 200,000 per year for a few years after the crash. So we legitimately have millions of homes missing from the market, which we're now feeling today. Guys, if anything holds true, it's that in an extremely undersupplied market, home prices will rise as interest rates fall. So take advantage of the market we're in now and its current condition with fewer buyers and less competition where you can have more flexibility with the home that you choose and you can refinance into a lower interest rate in the future, locking yourself into a lower home price than it will be in the future. For those of you that don't have to move and are perfectly comfortable, sure, it may be great to see where the market's headed in the coming year or two, but don't be surprised if home prices continue to slowly rise during what seems to be a future stagnant housing market. I hope you learned something new today. I hope you found some of this information valuable. If you have any questions or just wanna let me know in the comments what you think is gonna happen, I'd love to know and start the conversation. My name is Rick Cartoonian. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.